you were preparing for the Olympic Games in Japan, and mm -hmm. then the pandemic hit, uh, forced the games to get pushed to 2021. Let's talk about the decision you made to uh, decide to call it a career and um, yeah. you know, pretty much retire from the sport. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, I was, my roommate here, we were, he was training for the U.S. Olympic trials. Um, so we were sort of like hand in hand going for it, like going for this last hurrah, right? Um, we were training with a, a guy named Chris Morgan, who was the uh, Switzerland head coach, the head swim coach uh, to the Beijing Olympics. Um, and so that was like going really well. But then obviously the pandemic hit and we sort of like every, all the pools are starting to close, all the gyms are closing. It would have been like hell to try to like maintain athletic like fitness. Um, and we, we tried to do it, we tried to do it, but, uh, I just was thinking about it more and more. And I was like, you know, uh, this is my last sort of like year, maybe two years in Boston. Um, all of my college friends are up here. Like it's my last sort of like chance to really hang out with them and have fun with them and everything. Um, and I didn't really want to spend that, those last like few months with them being so focused on something that I've been doing for the last 20 years like I love the sport and everything but I just felt like it was sort of time to maybe move on um, and yeah it's able to train up until because the pools are closed and we're now what like six months into the pandemic maybe five months um, so yeah it was just like circumstances were like really against me so I had to throw the towel in. Did you feel mentally it was draining I know physically preparing and, and, and training for such a big uh, event. You know, it's funny because I actually felt there was a lot less mental stress after I after I graduated from college when the formal regimen was like no longer there. It, I was sort of like I realized that I was doing it for myself and my passion for the sport, and so that really helped me prioritize uh, what I wanted to do and set all my goals on my own without having someone like breathing down my neck to do it all. And I just thought that was like a weight off my shoulders, and I could finally like do the sport for for me, for myself, and for like my love for it. Um, so I actually think that my favorite memories of me swimming and probably in those last few months when it was all just like on my own time, um, I carved out the time out of my day. I work a full-time job, but I still like went to the pool and did the gym after like, or for three hours after work. And you know, I was just like totally into it and I was loving it. Um, yeah, I just, I wish the pandemic didn't, ha didn't, ha didn't happen. So uh, I could have continued, but it's life. Looking back at your swimming career and especially representing Guam, what are some of the memories that stick out most for you? Yeah, I was thinking about this earlier. I think uh, my absolute favorite memory was the Pacific Games in 2015, uh, PNG. Um, when I was little, I remember sending off like maybe it was 2003, 2007 uh, uh, swim team, and I looked at it, looked at like the results and everything. I was like, damn, I want to, I want to win a gold medal at the Pacific Games one day, um, and then. 2011 came around, I won a silver medal, totally unexpected. Um, and that sort of like really helped, I guess, streamline my vision with the sport, right? It really gave me a lot of um, motivation to go after that, I guess, little boy Ben dream. And then come 2015, I won two golds, a silver and a bronze. And I think that, that was like definitely the best moment, the best memory that I had with the sport because, you know, I was doing something that I love. Um, it was, I was representing the island. I saw the flag raising and the, the flag blowing in the wind and the, the Finogi Chamorro and everything. And I was just like, wow, this is an awesome moment. And for you, you were able to hold the uh, Guam flag at the Olympic Games. What was that feeling like, um, taking that lap around the track with uh, all the nations there? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it was the day before when Joey Miranda said that, or he announced who the flag bearer was. Um, and I, when he said Ben, I was like, I could not have been more excited. Uh, and then we gave uh, Rick Bloss a call, Mr. Bloss a call, and I just like thanked him for the for the honor of being able to do that. And then you know when we were walking out and everything, I was a little bit nervous because there's a lot of responsibility responsibility behind it, um, where I had to sort of like uh, be conscious of the the pole and everything because it was really heavy make sure that the flag wasn't getting caught on it and everything. But, you know, I tried to live in the moment. It was really awesome. I guess it was sort of like a, um, my mind went blank during the middle of it because I was so focused on just like making sure that everything was going well. But then once the flag was like out of my hands and I could enjoy the rest of the opening ceremony, it was like the most phenomenal experience. Have you talked to some of the younger swimmers and, and letting them realize that this is uh, a huge thing for you to be able to represent the island? 
um, in the sport that you've grown to love and any uh, advice that you've gave um, any of these swimmers that are looking to step up and uh, be able to get a spot on the swim team? Mm -hmm. So I've been on a few teams, right, over the years. I think it's like 11 or 12 international meets. And I started out as, as one of those little kids. And then towards the end of my career, I was the senior member of the team. Um, and, you know, there were more little kids. I don't want to say little kids, but like more younger members of the team that were coming on to the um, team Guam. And I sort of stepped into that role of being like the role model or the mentor and everything. Right. And so throughout all those, I was just like, you know, if you keep doing what you love, keep listening to your coach, your coach knows best. They're the experienced ones. They've seen it. They've seen it. They've been there, done that. They've been to all these meets. They know what's best for you. Um, just like continue doing what you love and um, yeah, just listen to your coach because they're the ones that's going to get you, get you to where you want to be. And what's next for you? Are you looking to maybe step into a coaching role for a swim team? And just how do you feel like you're going to stay connected to the sport of swimming? Yeah, awesome. I love that question. Um, so I'm actually connected with the uh, YMCA out here. I spoke with the aquatics director of my local branch, and I'm getting certified to be a Y instructor, swim instructor. Um, that's sort of like my first step to get into coaching because I was thinking like, well, actually, when I retired, I sent a note to the Guam Swimming Federation, at, uh, GNOC, saying that, like, thank you so much for all these opportunities. I'm retiring now, but I still plan on, like, staying connected with the sport, being involved with it. Please let me know how I can help, um, even though I'm on the other side of the world, literally, like, anything that I can do remotely, I'm more than happy to help. And um, just thinking about, like, how else I want to be connected, like, yeah, that's staying with the Y or like, coaching with the Y is probably the, the easiest thing for me to do right now or the easiest way to get back into the sport. Um, so starting there, start, starting as like a learn to swim instructor, hopefully getting into a little bit more like the YMCA clubs. Um, we'll see where it takes me, but like it's definitely something I want to pursue. Yeah. And now that you're living the retired life, uh, what do you plan on doing uh, when things do finally clear up? Uh, probably get into a master's team or something because I'm starting to feel that itch. Like I've been out of the water for four months and it's like I'm starting to feel that uh, – I miss the sport. I miss being in the water. Um, so that's probably one of the first things I'm going to do is like seek out a master's program. Like even though it's not going to be competitive, at least I'm still going to be doing something that I've done for the last 20 years. Um, so that's probably the first thing. I'll probably get more into like the Y instructor stuff in a more serious manner. Um, but then also continue with my like full-time job. I work at Wayfair nine to five. Um, yeah. The Guam Summer Camp Series, hosted by men's national basketball team coach E.J. Calvo, focused on shooting this past weekend. Boys high school players from around the league jumped on the opportunity to get better during the summer. I think it actually makes me a little more competitive as opposed to being around other people my age because it makes me want to try harder and be the best I can be around these kinds of people. Uh, it's really nice to be back on the court, uh, seeing basketball activities, uh, seeing all the, the love for the game come back, and uh, it's just nice to work with some of the young players out there, and we definitely see some talent at these camps uh, that could potentially uh, uh, represent Guam in the future, so it's just nice to get them in the gym. For incoming freshmen, looking to elevate their game. The Guam Summer Camp Series was a good way for them to gain more experience. At this camp, I'm looking forward to improving my shooting skills and my all-around all around offensive skills, defensive skills, and more of, my, more of my dribbling, ball handling, and passing. It's a really good opportunity for me to learn how to play at a higher up level. We're starting with fundamentals, uh, shooting mechanics, and then building up to uh, just how to get open, how to get separation, and, and improve your shooting percentage. So uh, we're going to cover a lot of things this weekend with uh, all, all the groups at these camps. For three days, players worked on free throw shooting, three-point shooting, shooting on the move, jump shots, and getting open off the ball. National team player Ben Borja says it's important to give back to the kids and represent for Guam basketball. The goal is to inspire the younger generation to look forward to what Guam basketball can offer at the national level. Growing up, um, I didn't have a lot of opportunities like this. Uh, Guam, Guam basketball has definitely uh, made strides in terms of where the program is right now. And these kids are very fortunate to have uh, a program like this because not a lot of people say they can or they, or they do have this type of program. 